Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my vlog. I have zero energy today. Like, I feel extremely tired, but I need to power through because today is a workout day and I need to go to the gym. Let's get ready. As I already said, today I have no energy. And what I try to do on days like these is listen to music that energizes me. So I'm going to get my headphones and I'm going to blast some music to like, I don't know, inject some life into me. I get so many questions about these headphones. These are the Sony XW1000MX4, if I'm not mistaken, and the color silver. And they're noise cancelling and they're amazing. They're really, really good. A bit pricey but also not really if you consider that's like a really good pair of headphones but in my opinion they're totally worth it it's now 9 a.m i'm a bit more energized and i want to start working soon but i want to first change the bed sheets and make myself some breakfast this is Java, by the way. You know what time it is now? It's smoothie time. So to prove that not everything is sunshine and rainbows, this is my desk from yesterday. This mess. I mean, what happened to this guy here? I don't even know. I think I need to buy a new mat because this one has some marks that don't come off anymore. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments. Okay, I am officially tired of this keyboard. I'm gonna switch back to my mechanical one. It's lunchtime, heated up some soup. I'm done with work and next on my to-do list is to go to the gym, which I'm kind of dreading because I'm so lazy. Like I'm so lazy during winter during summer, I actually enjoy working out, but during winter, I was actually thinking of signing up for gymnastics again. Sometimes I feel like I'm very isolated all day and I spend a lot of time alone. And I think it would be good to like step out of my comfort zone again and do exercise that I'm actually excited about. But I haven't had time yet to look into that. So until then, the gym will have to do. I feel like I'm a bit far away. I don't know if you guys can hear me. If you're wondering why I have a cap, it's because my hair looks really disgusting right now. Let's go. I'm getting hungry. I need to make dinner. So I've been wanting to integrate more technical content into my vlogs. So I thought today we could try a system design exercise. And I picked a very typical interview example, which is how to design a newsfeed system. So I'm going to walk you guys through a proposal for designing a newsfeed system. And yeah, I would be very happy to get your feedback and any questions you might have in the comments below. So we want to design a newsfeed system. And these are the requirements. It has to allow users to publish posts. It has to allow users to see posts from who they follow. And the feed from each user can be sorted in reverse chronological order. And we expect an average daily volume of 5 million users. So let's get into it. We have two main workflows in the system. One is to publish a post and another to retrieve the news feed. So it's safe to say that we would need an API with two endpoints. One for post requests to publish a post and another for get requests to retrieve the newsfeed. So let's look at them separately and do a high level design. Let's start with publishing posts. So in this case, we would have a bunch of users 
who can access a certain URL. There will be a DNS service that maps the URL to a set of IP addresses, and it redirects the request to our load balancers. These will distribute the request to the web servers. These servers here are responsible for things like rate limiting and authentication. And then there are two important services that this feature would need. First of all, we would need a post service, and this takes in the post data and it stores it in a database. Here we could have a table for posts and maybe another for user data, and there's a bunch of other things that we could store in this database. For the post table, we would probably want a primary key with a post ID. And thinking ahead, we could also add a cache to reduce the read load on our database. Now, the second service would be the fanout service. This service delivers the post to all the followers of this person. There are two types of fanout services. So there's fanout on write and fanout on read. When we have fanout on write, this means that each user's newsfeed is pre-computed at the time that each post is published. This means that every time that a new post is published, we need to deliver this post to each of the followers' cache as soon as it's published. The advantage of this method is that reading the newsfeed will be very quick because it's already computed. But the problem here is that when we have users with a lot of followers, it will have to compute each of the followers' feed on every post, which is not really sustainable. Then on the other hand, we have fanout on read. And in this case, each user's newsfeed is computed when the user requests the feed. So basically when the user logs into the application and goes to the homepage. This is typically slower because it has to compute the feed at request time, but it's actually good for users that are very inactive because this way we don't waste feed computations. Usually what happens is that systems do a combination of both. So they do fanout on write and on read, depending on who the user is. Let's take the fanout for write for this use case. We would have a queue and we would have a cache for the news feeds. The service submits a message into the queue with a list of followers that need to be updated with the new post and the post ID. The fanout servers take this message and store it into the cache associated to each user's feed ID. And now let's look at the GET request to retrieve the news feed. Here we have again a few clients which send GET requests. These requests reach the load balancers, which in turn will distribute the requests to the web servers. The servers will call the newsfeed service, and this one here will fetch the newsfeed from the cache. The cache, which we populated in the previous service, will have a list of post IDs. And once the service has these IDs, it will then complement the data with what's in the database. And then finally, the newsfeed is returned to the client. So this is obviously a simplified version of a newsfeed system, and there are many more trade-offs to discuss and things that we could do to improve it. But I think it's a good starting point, and I hope that it was helpful. Please ignore the bad cable management. Anyway, I wanted to take a moment to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this portion of the video. Brilliant.org is a great platform to learn math and science and computer science interactively online. They have thousands of lessons and they add new ones every month. If you watched my previous videos, you might have noticed that I've done courses on algebra, on logic and on some topics related to computer science. And I found them all very interactive and engaging. And I think they're really good lessons to kind of recall certain topics from school, which we would otherwise kind of forget over time. So whether you're just curious about a STEM topic or you're looking to upskill, I'm sure there's content available on Brilliant that would spike your interest. You can start for free at brilliant.org slash csjackie and the first 200 of you will get 20% off the premium annual subscription. As always, thank you so much for every single one of you for supporting my channel and making these collaborations possible. And again, thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this portion of the video. Oh my god, I'm so tired now. <sighs> Something I noticed recently, I've been getting a few messages from people to ask me to talk about chat GPT. To be very honest, I haven't thought about chat gpt properly like for myself i think we get a lot of influence from what we read in the news and on social media and this unconsciously influences our opinion about things so i think it's good to try to think for yourself and be very rational and try to come up with a hypothesis by yourself i've used chat gpt i think it's very cool and it's very impressive but it's also not the first of its kind, to be honest. Maybe it's the best of its kind, but it's definitely not the first. And I think that people on the internet are exaggerating a bit and being very dramatic about this. And to be very honest, I think that people who are saying that ChatGPT is like eating up 
all of the software development jobs from now on like people say that because it drives clicks and people want to get views on their stuff online like that's a very dramatic very exaggerated view of it you can't ask chat gpt specific questions about proprietary information from the company that you're working at and ChatGPT won't know how to answer these because it wasn't trained on data related to the company that you're working at. So there's a big legal and ethical world separating ChatGPT and like the job that you actually do for a company. That's just my view on it. But again, I haven't done enough research about it and I haven't thought about it properly just yet. But I just wanted to share that with you. I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave it a like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video. Bye.